Country Boardroom back. Uh, producer, lead actor, director, Mr. John Krasinski. This is not good at all. <laughs> um, before we get started with the Q&A, I heard you have some good news you want to share. I do. It's always amazing when these movies find a home, and we just found a home at Sony uh, Picture Classics. Couldn't be more honored to be with them, so thank you. Uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, we want to make sure there's uh, enough time for audience questions, but uh, quickly, if you could go over, uh, you've been here with a film before, um, you're directing again, how did you find the script, and what was it that drew you to decide uh, this was to be your next directorial effort? Well, actually, I was I was attached as an actor about five or six years ago, Jim Strauss, the incredible writer. I don't think anybody else can do. Thank you, yeah. Terrible turns between drama and comedy like that, and he, he uh, asked if I'd do the lead role, and I said yes, and then, like a lot of indie movies, it couldn't find its financing, and they asked if I would actually buy the script, and I was like, I don't think you know who I am, man. I'm not, not George Clooney, and um, I ended up buying the script, and we went out and, uh, and got it made, which was so fantastic, but for me, when I read the script, I, I'm lucky enough to come from an incredible family. We're very close, we always were very close, and yet when I got to the end of the script, I said, that's my family. And I don't know why, but you just connect to um, the fact that life is messy and that family is so important and so special, but also so complicated. And I think riding those two rails is a really difficult thing to do. So I connected immediately and I just felt like hopefully everybody else would connect to it. In some way you could see your family or yourself in there somewhere. didn't think much about the acting job at all because when you get that cast to come down to Jackson, Mississippi and shoot with you, um, yes, go Jackson for sure. Um, and they, they come down there, they're getting paid no money, they're staying in a weird hotel, and they're all doing it just because of this story, because of you. That responsibility is overwhelming and I just knew that when I was watching these performances, the only thing I thought as an actor was, just don't screw it up, man. Like. Look what Marco Martindale's doing. Just don't screw that up. Just get in there and uh, hit a solid double. <laughs> and uh, so I actually didn't even think about the acting part. It was, it was really fun to just be in that sort of cipher with everybody. Uh, and speaking of your ensemble, can you talk about how you chose them for the part? I had the very rare occasion of basically getting everybody I wanted, my first choice. The, the, when I, my first job ever was a Marshalls commercial with Miss Marco Martindale. <laughs> Um, I was an extra, but got bumped up to feature, and uh, so I think I got to talk to her, and we bonded, and I've always been in love with her forever, and I'm sure anybody out here, if you've been watching TV or film for the last, I don't know how long, she's blown you away pretty much every single time. So for me, she was the number one choice. I know Jim wrote it with her in mind. She said yes, and this is not a joke. Um, I called Richard Jenkins, and he said, yeah, the script's good. If you get Marvin Martindale, I'll do it. <laughs> So I got Richard, and then uh, and then after that, you know, I think those two people are such unbelievably talented people, but also wonderful humans, and the the sort of beacon of light that you want to head for. So I think after that, everybody kind of came on really quickly. I, I, I was difficult to get in the end, but uh, <laughs> this guy finally made his deal, and oh boy, we got there. <laughs> Do we have any questions from the audience so far? Oh, there's several hands. All right, how about there, right towards the front? Yes, so, speaking of your pictures, the, uh, I think most surprising, the point emotional moment for was when she went for the surgery and she started bawling. Yes. What was surprising? Scripted, actor, director? Scripted. Um, scripted and actor, I, I luckily had a camera on it, but uh, that was in the script. That's what I mean, Jim. When I read that moment in the script, I burst into tears. I had no idea it was going to happen. Um, that and the haircutting scene and things like that are, are pieces of film that I hadn't seen in my head when I read it. So 
when that scene in particular was exactly what I was talking about, actually, of like Margo Martindale's doing that. I had heard about these scenes before from my friends, but I had never been in one where I, I'm not kidding, if you go back and watch it, we should all do it again. Um, uh, I'm holding my breath because it's just, that is so powerful and you didn't want to burst into tears too early and she, you could feel it. You could just feel in the room that something spectacular was happening. And I was just so thankful that she did that for us. Uh, I saw another hand shortly. Yes, sir. I love that scene, that the hair cutting scene. It, rem it reminded me of when I gave my father, my late father, a shave. Oh, wow. Very emotional scene for me. So, wonderful film, John. Thank you so much. So, I understand you're a huge basketball fan. I, I am. <laughs> Perfect segue. Keep it going. Keep it going. Send it to this guy, he'll send it to me. I think we have time for a few more questions. Yes. Thank you very much. I like baseball too. I'm just kidding. So, as I was watching, I was trying to think of a better ensemble cast I've ever seen. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for saying that. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. I love what you had to say about, you know, I remember a few Q&As where someone would say, how did you get that cast? Well, they chose you. That's, that's absolutely right. Josh Ritter nerd. He came by the set of The Office one time, and uh, I totally fanboyed out on him, embarrassed myself, <laughs> then told him I'd go to a concert to make up for it. Went to the concert, fanboyed harder, might have cried. And then uh, in New York, I got up on stage and introduced him in this concert, and we became really close. Um, and his music has always been really powerful to me. I, I, I truly think he's sort of our Bob Dylan. He's got so much to say, and he's so poetic and so beautiful. And, uh, everything he does, he's got such a wide spectrum of music. And I'll never forget when I called him, I was sure that he wouldn't say yes, but I was listening to his music while we were, you know, doing all the prep, and I just said, you know, would you ever want to do the music for this movie? And he went, oh man, that would, wow, that would be, yeah, that would be cool. And he was the biggest fan of this movie the whole time, and he's just been such a huge supporter. He gave us all the music for a song, literally. So he just, he, he just, everybody in this movie knew what it was or what it could be, if I didn't screw it up. And so they all jumped in, and he was one of the, the biggest people to do that, and, and was so, um, again, just so honored to, to have him on board. Um, does anybody have anything else to get about the balcony? Are there any hands up there? Oh, there is. Yes. Yeah, my wife, uh, I brought her here for her 50th birthday, and uh, she had a cell girl hematoma and survived the craniotomy. Oh, my God. Can we do a round of applause for that? Also, happy birthday. <laughs> my, so my question was, <laughs> anyway, the question I was wondering about you was, the writer John and yourself, was there any experience with that, with the craniotomy and somebody surviving that, going through that exact thing? Because what you captured at the end, when I found out that she had survived, there was a moment there that you know, I was crying up here because I remember how much joy I had. Mm -hmm. No, to get that news from the doctor that she survived. Mm -hmm. I wondered if you had any personal experience or John had any personal experience with that. I believe Jim does have personal experience. I don't want to speak out of turn, but I'm pretty sure this is a this is a semi autobiographical story for him, um, which I think is the reason why you can feel how powerful it is. Um, I think what I've had experience with, and I think most people in this room, in some way, shape, or form, have had experience with, is um, how it's never. It never goes the way it's supposed to go. So it happens quickly. It happens without you knowing. It happens the day that the day after or the day before you were going to say goodbye or something like that. So I I have lost uh, 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 some people in my life. I lost my best friend in high school, and it just it just happens like that. And so that was the power of that moment.
enough for me was uh, how it happens and who are you with when it happens. Uh, we have time for two more questions, and there's a hand right there. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, I, uh, I had my daughter about uh, six months, let's say, five, six months before we started shooting this. And had we shot this movie six months before, it would be a totally different movie, I promise you that. Um, I think I realized, and I was embarrassed to realize how the cliches are true, and they just keep coming. Um, I connected with my parents in a different way. I connected with my brothers in a different way. I saw my faults very clearly. I saw what I hoped were strengths very clearly, and then I looked at this little person and I just said, none of it matters except you, and so that becomes a very powerful thing. And so I think on top of all that, I got down to Mississippi and I was very raw. So, uh, so all these sort of emotions and stories that we were all telling each other and doing for each other, um, I was a wide open uh, nerve. So it was, uh, it was a cry he said every now and again. <laughs> so, uh, Rehearsals were tough and the, and the scenes themselves were even better, but thank you for asking that because there's, there's a whole lot of my daughter and, and my experience with her in this movie. One final question, and there is a, well, let's go right there, actually, with you, yes. Hi, um, I really love the film, and thank you. I just wanted to know, how many days did you do this to shoot? I think in the end it was 23. I think it was supposed to be 22, and we pushed. Uh, an extra day, we had to make some stuff up. It was 23 days, um, so it was a really, really fast shoot. But like I said in my intro, there's, I, I, there's, there's really no way to describe it. When, when everybody comes down and you're jamming with 23 days and a certain budget, and everybody's down, like you, you, you realize very quickly. You hope you have the group of people that's doing it for the right reason. Man, did I have the most unbelievable crew and the most unbelievable cast, and we, we got it done in 23 days. Honestly, there wasn't anything that I thought. Just go back. So that was that was pretty special for me. Excellent. Let's please thank John for this. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.